Greetings to all. Welcome to Future of this Academy. Today we are going to see the hot topic of the year, day 11. Already we have done nearly 10 videos under this hot topic of the year session. People who do not watch those videos, kindly watch that to get the continuation of this 11th video. Today we are going to discuss the two topics which are the controller of certifying authorities and security sockets layer. And the second topic is Ashman Bharat PMJ. This controller of certifying authorities and security sockets layer comes under GS2, sorry, GS3 paper and Ashman Bharat comes under GS2. So now we are going to have a detailed analysis of these two topics. Our first topic is controller of certifying and security socket layer. First, we have to know about what is this controller of certifying authorities that is CAE. It was appointed by the central government as per the session of 17 under the IT Act. So, when it is established, it was established in, in the year 2000. What is the main objective of this controller of certifying authority is to facilitate the growth of e-commerce and the e-governance. By promoting these both in a widespread adoption of digital signatures, also the license and regulate the working of certifying authorities. Under this, we have to know about what these are done detailedly. So, here, this controller of certifying authorities says that it will help the inscription relying parties can transfer data securely and authentically. This authority has established procedures for confirming the legitimacy of the parties and it issues the certificate. Here, the digital signature based on asymmetric crypto systems are granted the necessary legal sanction under the section 18 of the Information Technology Act 2000. It says that electronic documents that have been digitally signed are treated as like the paper documents and these digital signatures are now recognized as, as equal to the handwritten signatures. The controller of certifying authority is empowered by the IT Act to grant license and oversee the operation of certifying authorities. Also, it seeks to encourage the widespread use of digital signature in advance the development of e-commerce and e-government. This, along with this controller of certifying authority, we have to know about RCAA, that is root certifying, root certifying authority of India that is RCAI. It was established under the session 18B of the IT Act. What is the purpose of this RCAI? It purpose to digitally sign the public keys of certifying authorities. Also, it uses the smart, smart trust software. It also holds the highest level of certification in India. Next, we have to know about the security socket socket layer. It is the security protocol that ensures the sensitive data. It was first developed in Netscape in the year 1995. This SSL certificate is the small data files that link a domain's IP address to an organization's information. Also, it is commonly used to secure credit card transactions, data transfers, logins, and etc. The URL of a website that uses the SSL begins with HTTPS rather than HTTP. This SSL encrypts data being transmitted over the internet to offer a high level of privacy. As a result, anyone attempting to intercept this data will only able to see a jumbled, nearly an in, unintelligible character mix. 
Also, it starts a handshake and authentication procedure between two communicating devices to make sure both are who they say they are. In order to ensure data integrity and ensure the data is not altered before it reaches its intended recipient and it also digitally signs the data. That's all from the controller of certifying and security sockets layer. Next, we are going to see Ashman Bharat PMJ. First, we have to know about what is Ashman Bharat PMJ. It is the largest health insurance and assurance program in the world that PMJ is fully funded by the and this PMJ stands for Pradhan Mantri Jan Arogya Yojana and it was introduced in the year 2018 February. It provides a sum of rupees 5 lakhs per family for both tertiary care which requires a super specialist and secondary care which does not. Here, the beneficiary of Janarugya Yojana are given cashless and paperless access to service at the point of service which is the hospital. The health benefit packages pay for diagnostics, medications, surgery, medical care and daycare expenses expenses now who are the beneficiaries of this ashman bharat r it is based on the socio economic caste census and the socio economic caste census data it finds the beneficiaries of the entitlement based program are identified. The beneficiary is deemed insured once the database identifies them and they are free to enter any hospital that has been accredited. Now who are funding this? The program is funded in the following proportions like 100 percentage funding from Union territories by the central without a legislature and 90 percentage for northeastern states and Jammu and Kashmir, Himachal Pradesh and Uttarakhand and 40 to 60 percentage for all states and union territories which has their own legislature. Now which agencies have been taking over this care? Under the Society Registration Act 1860, the National Health Authority was established as an independent body to carry this scheme in a cooperation with state governments. Now, what are all the main objectives of this scheme? It is to ease the beneficiary's financial burden of out-of-packet medical expenses. Also, to increase the beneficiary's access to and affordability of healthcare services. By improving the nation's healthcare delivery systems, effectiveness and quality. By encouraging the beneficiaries use of preventive, promotive and curative health interventions. The state government's highest authority, the state health agency is in charge of implementing this scheme throughout the state. Now what are all the challenges have been seen under this scheme are? The first challenge is lack of awareness. Because potential beneficiaries of this program are not well informed, particularly in rural areas. A large number of eligible beneficiaries are unaware of their benefits or how to use them. To raise awareness and demand the program outreach and communication efforts must be strengthened. The country's unequal distribution and availability of healthcare infrastructure and human resources present as supply side constraint for the program. The next challenge is reimbursement issues. Here it ensures prompt and sufficient reimbursement of claims to the impaneled hospitals particularly the private ones is the challenge for this Scheme. There are numerous hospitals have voiced concerns about lengthy procedures, low package rates, high denial rates and 
delayed payments. To maintain the scheme sustainability and viability, it is necessary to expedite and streamline the claim settlement process and to periodically review the package rates. The third challenge is fraud and abuse. Under this, the program must guard against an identified instance of fraud and abuse by dishonest people looking to take advantage of their own gain. It is imperative to fortify an anti-fraud mechanism and implement strengthened measures against individuals who engage in fraudulent and negligent activities under the scheme. Now, what are the recommendations have been done under this scheme are Mainly, first we have to know about the provision of Ayushman card. Every potential beneficiary should be given an Ayushman card as a part of the program which can function as a prepaid card worth Rs 5 lakh and to be used to receive free medical care at any hospital that has an affiliation. The beneficiary identification and verification may be less complicated and time consuming as a result. The next recommendation is scope. The program out to broaden its scope and coverage by incorporating additional medical conditions, treatment and services within its purview. The third is convergence. To prevent duplication, fragmentation and confusion, the plan should improve its coordination and convergence with other health schemes and programs at the federal and state level. Also, in order to take advantage of their resources and experience, the plan should also promote cooperation and partnerships with a range of stakeholders, including academic institutions, business and civil society organizations. That's all from our today's topics. To get this PDF download, you can get from our Telegram channel. The Telegram channel's link will be provided in the description. Thank you.